Hello guys, welcome to or back to my channel. My name is Sarah and I live in my self-converted transit van back here and I turned 23. Uh, I turned 23 a couple days ago and for my birthday celebrations, my friend Emery made me some cornbread and little desserts. We had a game night, we went on a bike ride. And yeah, all my friends got me like kind of reusable items, which is cool. I got like a stasher bag, which I've been wanting for so long, but literally a year I've wanted a stasher bag, but they're so expensive. I couldn't bring myself to buy one. So my friend got me one and then I got this reusable straw, which is kind of cool because you can open it to clean it. So that's kind of cool. I have reusable grocery bags, which I always need more of, it feels like. And then my friend got me this crop top. Because when you live in a van, people kind of know to give you things you're actually going to use, which I really, really appreciate. I thought that I would share 23 lessons that I've learned in 23 years. So I've written them all in my phone, and let's get started. Lesson number one is learning to trust the universe. You know that saying, like, everything happens for a reason? I really feel like sometimes really bad things or seemingly bad things happen to me and I get really bummed about it and I get really sad. And then years later, I look back and I'm like, oh wait, that wasn't bad. That actually led me to some of the best things. There's this one quote from a book I really like, The Alchemist, if you haven't read it, it's like one of my favorite books. And the quote goes, when you want something, all the universe conspires in helping you achieve it. Sometimes you realize you have this dream and you do what you do to set that goal and work towards it But there's also an element of trust with the universe that they will put situations in your life to help you achieve that and I'm learning to trust the universe more and more every day Lesson number two is to prioritize yourself. I think sometimes people maybe perceive this as selfish, but I always think you should put yourself first. I think serving others is really important and doing good things for others is so necessary for the world's well-being. But in order to help others, we have to help ourselves first. So we always need to put ourselves number one, our well-being number one above all else. If you imagine that you're on an airplane and all of a sudden the face mask dropped down and something has gone wrong, they tell you to put your face mask on before you help others put theirs on. And I think that that is true of many other situations in life and that doesn't mean to not help others. It, you just help yourself as a prerequisite and a way to help others. The third lesson I've learned throughout my years in life is to be vulnerable. I was so bad at being vulnerable growing up. I grew up with kind of emotionally detached engineer parents who, when I cried, weren't really the type to like hug and comfort me. So when I grew up and I had these negative emotions or fear or sadness or depression or whatever, it was really hard for me to open up with my friends and close loved ones about that. But I realized that being vulnerable is probably one of the most rewarding things that we can do and there's so much beauty that comes from it. There's a researcher and writer named Brene Brown. She has a lot of TED Talks that are pretty popular and I read one of her books called Braving the Wilderness and in that book she has a quote that says, staying vulnerable is a risk we have to take if we want to experience connection. The fourth lesson I've learned is to not let fear drive my car. So fear, I think, is a very necessary emotion and feeling. We need to experience fear to know when we need to flee a situation. But when fear is the driver of our car, if that makes sense, if that analogy makes sense, driving our car, I think in a lot of ways it just builds this kind of safety net that prohibits us from seeing the world and from truly living. I think that risk taking is really important to live a fulfilling life and learning how to manage those risks is important for safety and so fear plays a role in managing those risks but if we let fear drive our car sometimes we don't even manage the risks we just try to eliminate them and I don't think that that's the way I want to live necessarily because I want to live and I think that um, yeah risk taking is really important so don't let fear drive your car. My fifth lesson is to read more books. When I was a kid, I loved reading. I was a total bookworm. I would just read and read and read so many books, one after another, I loved it. And then somewhere along the way, I kind of lost sight of that. And it wasn't until kind of the middle of college when I rekindled my love for reading books. And the way I view it is if somebody has spent 
30, 40, 50 years doing all this research and they put all that knowledge into a book and you read that book, you're essentially downloading like 30 years of wisdom and knowledge from that book. So you can just be learning so much. And I just think that reading is so important. It makes me so happy and grounded and I feel like I'm learning so much from it. Lesson number six is to learn the five love languages. They are gifts, acts of service, words of affirmation, quality time, and physical touch. There's so many people in the world and they all have different love languages. A mistake that I made for a really long time is to primarily give and receive love through my love language which is words of affirmation. So I mainly feel love when people give me affirmations and I give love by giving people affirmations. But I've realized throughout the years that some of my friends primarily feel love through physical touch or gifts or quality time together. And so when I give them words of affirmation, it's not the way they best feel loved. So an effort that I've made over the last two years or so is to really branch out and try to give love through all the different types of love languages and to try to figure out what that other person's love language is and give them what the way they feel loved if that makes sense. Lesson number seven is to set low goals that you can actually accomplish rather than shooting high and I know this kind of seems counterintuitive but when you set a really low goal it's more sustainable. So instead of making your goal to run five miles every single day, maybe your goal should just be to put your tennis shoes on and go outside. In that way, you can develop this consistency where it's a very easy goal that you can do every single day. And you'll naturally probably build that esteem and start running the mileages you want. But I think setting those low goals is really important for putting votes into the identity you want. So now when you go out, every single day and you get outside with tennis shoes and you go on a run, even though it's not five miles, you're voting to this identity and you're viewing yourself as the person that goes outside to run. There's a quote from this book I really like called Atomic Habits and it goes like this. You do not rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. So work on your systems and set low goals. Lesson number eight is the realization that you vote with your dollar, whether that's fast fashion or veganism, or there's so many different things, right? Right now, the election is going to happen soon, and so there's this huge conversation about voting and the importance of voting. But I also think that people sometimes neglect how their dollar, when they're buying something, is a vote as well. So pay attention to what you're voting for and make sure that the companies and the products you buy are aligning with your values. That leads me to lesson number nine, which is activism. I think activism is a really important thing. It's a big part of my life, but I really throughout the years have realized that leading by example is probably, in my opinion, one of the most effective forms of activism. Although there's so many different types and they all play different roles. Lesson number 10 is alone time is so necessary. I just feel like that's pretty self-explanatory, but I never realized that because I was always kind of an extrovert growing up. And now I really value my alone time and I think it's so important for me. Lesson number 11 is to be aware of the us versus them mentality in your brain. I see this in myself in so many different ways and I see this in others all the time where we outcast other people to not be in our tribe based on their political views, based on what they eat, based on their philosophies, based on their mannerisms, based on their upbringings or their environment or how much money they have. And this even goes into kind of discrimination where we outcast people based on their race or based on their gender or based on species. This us versus them mentality is so toxic. To some degree, it's important to realize differences in groups because it helps us in some ways, I guess. But ultimately, I think that seeing the unity in everybody is also very important and it allows us to have empathy, sympathy, and kindness. Sorry, I'm coming at it with the quotes today, but there's so many good quotes out there. And this quote really sums it up, I think. We were all humans before race disconnected us, religion separated us, politics divided us, and wealth classified us. My goal and what I've learned kind of recently and I'm still trying to embody is I want to be able to say, oh, I don't fully vibe with this person, so I don't necessarily have business with them. I don't 
want them in my life, but at the same time see the unity that there are so many similarities between me and them. And even if I don't have a place for them in my life, I can still have love for them and recognize the unity between me and them. Lesson number 12 is to journal more. I don't know, yeah, journal. <laughs> Lesson number 13, spend time in nature. I think nature is such a, a beautiful force and we can learn so much from it. And it, it makes me sad that in some cities it seems like there's not that much access to nature, but I, I do think you can still find it. Even getting your hands in dirt and gardening or something is a really great way to connect to nature. Lesson number 14 is not to be stuck on your plans. Planning is important. I have to plan when I live full time in my van, where I'm gonna go, where I'm gonna be, but I never stick to it, <laughs> if that makes sense. I've never really stuck fully to a plan. And if I stuck so strongly to plans, then I wouldn't have some of the best adventures I have. So I really think plan loosely. I guess that kind of goes along with trusting the universe because if you trust the universe, you realize that the universe's plan or God's plan or whatever you want to call it is like they, he, they, whoever knows best, not you. <laughs> so you kind of give up your plans for the, the way the universe goes, I guess, the way the universe flows. Lesson number 15 is to meditate more. I feel like meditation really changed a lot of things for me. I attribute it as one of the things that healed the relationship with my family. I had a really bad relationship with my family. And then I started just meditating every single time after we got in a fight. And I think it really helped me kind of recognize these thoughts in my head that I was having that um, basically I was doing nothing wrong and they were doing everything wrong. And they were certainly doing some things wrong, but I was also doing things wrong. And being aware of those thought patterns and how they were not serving me, I think was really helpful for me to be able to release them and also to have more awareness in the future whenever they came up. Lesson number 16 is to give less shits about what people think about you, especially when they're things you can't change. Now I have this little family on YouTube and before I was making videos to basically no one. <laughs> And that was really great because I really didn't have any opinions on um, my life or me other than personal people in my life. And when I started getting all these comments, I started realizing, you know, there's so many different people that have these different opinions about you. And you see that in reality, not only online as well, where people are always saying, oh, this isn't good or this is good. You should do more of this. You should do less of that. Everybody always has an idea of how things should be. Ultimately, I think when we give less energy to all these different viewpoints, we can give more energy to working towards what we love and bettering the world. Lesson number 17 is minimalism. I mean, I live in a van. I'm kind of forced to be minimalist, but I also see so much value in it if you live in a house even. I think being intentional about the objects you bring into your home and being aware of whether or not they actually serve you and how often you use them is really important for creating a space that's optimal for your life. But I also think that minimalism should extend to people. You know, there's that saying that you're the average of the five people you hang out with the most. So I think choose those people wisely and be aware of that energy exchange between people. Are they givers? Are they takers? Is there a mutual energy exchange between you and that person? Because over time, it gets really exhausting if someone is an energy taker. Okay, the next lesson is to get good sleep. I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory. I always shoot for eight hours and I really try to go to bed at a similar time and wake up at a similar time every day. It doesn't always happen, but I really find that when I do, I feel better. Lesson number 19 is that social media sucks. I feel like I didn't really learn that until within the last three or four years. And since then, I've been actively trying to find ways to manage and minimize my time on social media. I still keep it because I think as much as it sucks, it's also beautiful. There's so many positives that come from social media that I'm not willing to give up. And I really do believe that it serves me and it serves the world in so many ways. But um, ultimately I also view it as addictive. And so I'm always trying to find ways to manage that. 
Lesson number 20 is that putting energy into building lasting relationships is worth it. It's hard as fuck, but it's also really worth it. My friendship with Emery is kind of like the best relationship I've ever built and I feel so good about it because it's a relationship where we've been close friends for I think over three years now which isn't my longest friendship, but it's my healthiest. I think whenever any conflict happens, we both have kind of devoted ourselves to looking inward at what um, we've done wrong and also actively putting ourselves in each other's shoes. And even if we don't understand each other, to show compassion. I feel like my goal is to just have so many relationships in my life, like Emery and I's, where we've worked together to build this foundation. And because we've built this foundation, it's, um, it's a very easy and, and flowing and kind and loving relationship. Lesson number 21 is to make an effort to remember people's names. I used to be really bad at remembering names and then I realized that knowing someone's name makes people feel so special and why would you not want to make someone feel special even though I, naturally I'm not the best at it I make a extra effort so when somebody tells me their name if I meet a group of people I'll actually afterwards go into my notes and write all their names down I'll have to maybe go back to those notes but then I'll have those names and and it gets easier and easier to remember different people's names as you practice lesson number 22 is to be open to learning from others there's a part of me that when I hear someone has a different political view from me or uh, doesn't agree with veganism or uh, thinks living in a van is really weird I don't identify with them in that way, so I'm like, oh, I can't learn from them. It's not a conscious thought, you know? It's super subconscious that I, I almost am closed to hearing their lessons. Um, being open to people's lessons and their knowledge from all different walks of life, I think is really important for you to like learn and also um, decipher and critical think and all those different things. So. Um, I think that's an important lesson. And then lesson number 23, the very last one. This is so cheesy and ridiculous, but it's just to love. And I know that's cheesy, but I fully believe that that is the root of everything. I think it's the most important lesson we can learn. And it sounds so simple, but I think sometimes it can be really hard, especially if you don't naturally kind of vibe with someone I guess if that makes sense but coming from a place of love I think not only helps the other person and the world but it also helps you and your heart so that's my last lesson we're ending off on a very cheesy note here today but thank you for everyone who wished me a happy birthday and I hope you guys also had a beautiful day I hope you guys enjoyed this video I know it's a little different so I'm gonna end this video here thank you guys so much for watching please like and subscribe if you did enjoy this video because I'm posting videos every Saturday and I'm also doing it basically every single Wednesday at this point